Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the calculus of polar curves, specifically finding the slope of the tangent or of the curve. So let's see what that's all about. The basic idea as I see it is actually um, that we're really going to be talking about parametric equations. So you start with a polar curve and what we're going to do is we're actually going to convert. So you're given something like r equals f of theta. So maybe r is, uh, I don't know, cosine of 7 theta or it could be uh, 1 plus 2 sine of theta, whatever. It's just some kind of polar curve. So we start with r equals f of theta. And then what we're going to do is we're going to convert. So if you remember, you can convert to parametrics by using x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. It's really important that you remember those two um, because they're going to come up a lot. And then once we have that, uh, we can actually calculate the slope dy dx um, by calculating dy d theta divided by dx d theta. So it's really just a chain rule type of thing. So that's all a big deal and you gotta remember that. But as long as you remember that, you're pretty good. So you definitely wanna remember this. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna just memorize a formula. So textbooks uh, have a formula for this, but it's a lot of stuff to remember. And if you just remember that you're basically using the chain rule, uh, it's not that hard. So let's take a look at an example. So we have r is equal to cosine of 2 theta. So that's our polar curve that we want to find the slope of. And we want to find the slope at theta equals pi over 3. So I didn't mention it. Some people find this a little strange. But um, the slope of a polar curve is still dy dx. So it's in terms of y and x. Um, and that's because we graph our polar curves in the xy plane. We're just using a different um, system of uh, measuring coordinates. So let's see if we can do this problem. So first we remember that x is equal to r cosine theta and we're gonna replace that r with cosine of two theta because that's what r is equal to. So really we're looking at x equals cosine of two theta times cosine of theta. And we wanna start off by finding dx d theta. So dx d theta, this is a product, so we're gonna use product rule. So it's gonna be first derivative of the second, which is negative sine of theta and then plus second, which is cosine theta, times derivative of the first, which will be negative two sine of two theta. Don't forget the chain rule on that one. Okay, and now we need to evaluate this at pi over three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show the step where I just plug in pi over three across the board. I'm also kind of rearranging it a little bit, which I think is kind of the natural thing to do at this point. So substituting, and we end up with this. Now you have to think about the unit circle and the values that you have memorized. So I'm gonna substitute in all the things that I have memorized. So it's gonna be negative, um, and we're just going through and, and substituting straight in. Don't forget the unit circle. It's really important that you know those values. And then if we clean this up, we ultimately get negative radical three over four. So that's um, dx d theta. So uh, I'm gonna kind of summarize what we know. So we still have r is cosine of two theta. We're evaluating everything at pi over three, and we just figured out dx d theta is negative radical three over four. So what we're gonna do now is work on y. So if you think about it, we know that y is r sine theta, and that means we're replacing r with cosine of two theta. And this again gives us a product. So to find dy d theta, we're just gonna use the product rule. So it's, again, first derivative of the second, which is cosine, plus second, which is sine of theta, derivative of the first, which requires a chain rule, and we get this. Okay, and now we want to evaluate this at pi over three. And again, I'm gonna show a step where I just substitute in. I like to do this so that I can go back and check my work. So it's gonna be cosine of two pi over three, cosine of pi over three, and then I'm gonna bring the negative two, and then sine of pi over three, and sine of two pi over three. So this helps me when I do make a mistake, go back and figure out exactly where it came from. So let's substitute in the values that we have memorized for all of these trig functions. So negative one half, positive one half, then a radical three over two, and then another radical three over two. And if you simplify this, you end up with negative seven over four. So we're almost done, right? So 
we figured out uh, dx d theta, we figured out dy d theta, um, and what we want to do is we want to find dy dx. So dy dx is going to be equal to dy d theta divided by dx d theta. So that's why we calculated all these things. And just substitute in. So negative 7 fourths over negative radical 3 over 4 gives us just 7 over radical 3. That's the slope of the curve at theta equals pi over 3. Um, I also just ran this through my calculator to make sure I was getting the right values for the video. Um, and here's a screenshot of what that ended up looking like. Um, so I used the calculator to find first dy d theta. Well, I used t instead of theta because it's more convenient on the calculator. So I found um, dy dt, I found dx dt, and then I also had the calculator just you know do it all in one shot. Calculator loves to rationalize and there's kind of nothing you can do about that. But when I'm doing it by hand, I don't rationalize. So I would leave it like this, seven over radical three. I'm gonna do one more example that's a little weirder or some people feel it's weirder because there's no uh, trig function in the definition of r. So let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna use r equals theta squared over two and just at theta equals pi over two. So let's see how this goes. So again, x is r cosine theta. So I'm gonna replace r right away in this case. And then I'm gonna use the product rule to find dx d theta. So it's once you get the hang of it, it's just, you know, you, you just follow the steps and you're gonna get the slope every time. The hardest part really is remembering the values from the unit circle, I think. Um, so we use the product rule there. And now we're gonna evaluate this thing at pi over two. Pi over two is a really good value to evaluate it at um, because the quadrantals uh, have, you know, so sine is gonna be one and cosine is gonna be zero. So when we substitute in, we end up with pi squared over eight, which is a little weird, um, but then the rest of it's pretty nice. So this just simplifies to, uh, to negative pi squared over eight. And now we're gonna calculate for y. Y is equal to r sine theta. So substituting for r and then sine theta, product rule on this, it's gonna give us first derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. And now we need to evaluate this at um, pi over two. So let's plug in. So we end up with um, pi squared over eight, but then times zero and plus one times pi over two. So this actually all just cleans up to um, pi over two. So we get that. And remember, we're trying to find dy dx. So dy dx is gonna be dy d theta over dx d theta. And then if you substitute, we get pi over two over negative pi squared over eight, which is negative four over pi, which is kind of a strange slope, but you know, it's kind of a strange curve. So uh, that's how we do it. Uh, I also use my calculator on this. Here's a really tiny screenshot of that. I did basically the same thing I did in the previous problem. All right, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.